Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max and I'm here to talk about news that you may have heard this summer and that we've just been following throughout the year with EVs. It's frankly some of the most exciting news about EVs because it has to do with charging and convenience. Tesla supercharging is opening up more and more in the US to non-Tesla automakers. It started with Ford who led the way with an announcement that their vehicles were going to support Tesla superchargers eventually through the actual same plug that Tesla uses, the North American charging standard. But for the moment, or at least for next year, starting then, uh, through the use of an adapter, they'll sell their customers. General Motors followed up quickly on this news, announcing basically the same thing, and so have many other automakers since then, Volvo, Polestar, Rivian, uh, and very recently, Honda, very excitingly. So lots of automakers are in on it. This is the way charging is going in North America, but I wanna clear up a few misconceptions in this video and talk about limitations for cars that aren't Tesla that will be charging at Tesla locations. Before we even get into any, any of that, quick primer on terminology here, NACS, the Tesla North American Charging Standard, you can see here on my colleague Ryan's Model 3, is not the same thing as supercharging. This port could be your home charger. It could, as we now know, be a third-party charger provided by ChargePoint or Electrify America or anyone else. This is a standard in and of itself, and it's not the same thing as a supercharger. And CCS, crucially, is basically the competing or the older standard that, as we've seen in North America, is kind of going by the wayside. It's what a lot of existing vehicles, including the current Ford vehicles and all of the partners that Tesla Supercharging use. So if you have an EV right now that's not a Tesla, it's very likely this charging port. So the news, in short, is that the Tesla Superchargers like potentially ones behind me, but interestingly, not exactly the ones behind me, but many Tesla superchargers will work with non-Tesla cars like my Polestar. So if that terminal analogy just got you up to speed and you're still rushing for questions and you have uh, questions about how quickly your car will charge, when you can expect it to be available, and how this is all gonna work, how are you gonna pay for a charge, keep watching this video because those are the details that we can fill you in on. So the first and major important thing to note is that in the US, the deal that every automaker who's not Tesla has announced is that they're gonna be able to have access to roughly 12,000 Tesla superchargers and presumably expanding. Now, if you're a nerd like me, you may know there's a lot more than 12,000 Tesla superchargers in the country. What they mean by this is basically not all Tesla superchargers are going to support non-Tesla cars, um, or at least non-Tesla cars with the existing CCS port. This is a Tesla V2 supercharger, version two, shorthand. Version two may sound like it's new, but it's really been around for quite a while. Version three Tesla superchargers are the modern standard we expect in the United States, and version four superchargers have come online abroad with even newer designs. Version four almost certainly are all going to support non-Tesla vehicles, and version three sites all have the hardware, as far as we're aware, of being capable to support non-Tesla vehicles. They just have to be enabled to do so, and that's the process that's gonna happen starting in 2024. But the important thing to note here is that basically the Tesla app will make this clear, but just so you know, ahead of time, Chargers like this one here in the Boulder Mall or actually a Tesla charging site in Moab, Utah, a lot of specific superchargers that are older, unfortunately, will only work with Tesla vehicles because they're not V3. So if it's a V3 Tesla supercharger where they're advertised with a 250 kilowatt max charging speed, then they will work in non-Tesla vehicles. If not, without significant retrofits or a reinstallation of the site, they're not going to support non-Tesla vehicles at the moment. The next thing to know is I mentioned charging speed. So one of the big benefits of Tesla's is they all really charge really quickly and Tesla superchargers are great, they're reliable, they always provide the speed you expect on Tesla vehicles. Every vehicle is different, and that's one of the, been one of the challenges for, frankly, non-Tesla charge point operators to provide. How do you provide different charging speeds to different vehicles, adequately provide you know, support for different battery voltages, all this technical stuff? It's a hard challenge. And Tesla chargers, as they're currently configured, are not high voltage, or they're not 800 plus volt class, necessarily. They can be, we've seen evidence of this, and we suspect future ones will be, and maybe V3 Tesla superchargers can be outfitted with it, but as a result of them not currently working in a high voltage mode, this means that if you have a vehicle like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Lucid Air, and others that claim to support 800 volt charging, you're not gonna see fast charging. And in fact, crucially, Hyundai, Lucid, many of those brands with 800 volt vehicles haven't announced a partnership with Tesla. This may be part of that reason. 
So when they do announce a partnership, it's either going to mean they're going to accept a very slow charge rate at Tesla superchargers using their onboard boosters that step up the voltage, or Tesla's going to work with them, and this is what I predict is the more likely option, to make sure that as many superchargers as possible support these high voltage vehicles so the customers can get you know, the same kind of charge speed they would expect at, say, like a 350 kilowatt Electrify America dispenser. Also, if you have a vehicle that happens to have slow charging because vehicles have different maximum charging speeds, even if they're in the roughly the same battery voltage class, like let's say a Chevy Bolt that can only charge at 50 kilowatts, unfortunately, Tesla superchargers will do nothing to speed that up. Yes, you'll have an adapter and now you'll have a whole new network of chargers to go to and that's going to be amazing, but don't expect miracles in the sense that your vehicle is going to charge any quicker. In fact, technically, because you're using an adapter, if anything, there could be some very slight marginal losses. Now, I'm sure it'll be a well-engineered adapter. We're predicting this adapter will come in around the $200 zone because already the reverse adapter that Tesla makes for its vehicles to use non-Tesla chargers, basically the other direction, cost around $200. This ad adapter will probably cost that much, and I'm sure there will be third-party ones, but I highly advise you to buy the official one from your automaker or from Tesla. None of them are for sale yet, but we predict they will come on for sale uh, basically next year, 2024 to coincide with, of course, these superchargers supporting all the Tesla vehicles. My next point may sound pretty obvious, but basically, in addition to the high voltage limitations and everything else, Tesla superchargers are only partnered and authorized to work with the automakers who have announced a partnership with Tesla. So crucially, brands, as of us filming this at least, like BMW, Hyundai, Volkswagen, haven't necessarily announced support for Tesla supercharging. The momentum is indicating this is where they're going, but it's not a given yet. And like it or not, the CCS combined charging system standard is going to be here for a while. The likely outcome of this is in the next few years, we're going to see basically a whole ecosystem of Tesla superchargers, the existing Electrify America stations you may be aware of, ChargePoint Express units, EVgo, who already, by the way, has Tesla cables at their site, all of them hopefully supporting both standards. One more thing, if you're an EV nerd or if you follow news, you may have heard that some Tesla superchargers already in the US can charge non-Tesla vehicles. That's because they have a built-in adapter that uh, you know, has been referred to on the inside as the magic dock. Basically, they build in an adapter to their cables that lets their um, uh, cables either come out with this normal standard configuration to plug into a Tesla vehicle, or they can come out with a beefier CCS adapter built in uh, and that hardware will charge non-Tesla vehicles. That works on any CCS car. Those stations are extremely limited right now, though. There's only 12 of them in the US. And because of that, uh, I think we're probably not gonna see many more of them. It was an interesting experiment by Tesla, and of course I could be proven wrong, but it seems like the direction we're going in is that everyone is gonna get an adapter and from that point onwards, that's how they'll charge the Tesla superchargers. And eventually Tesla hopes, and I'm sure many of you do hope as well, that vehicles in North America will all have this charging port natively, and we won't need to use any of these adapters. So basically in short, those existing uh, few Tesla sites that have the built-in adapter are probably gonna remain the only ones. We might see more experimentation, but generally it seems like the North American charging standard will be the way to go. Currently, however, legally, there is an interesting uh, wrinkle here where to get access to the NEVI funding in the U.S., which basically funds, uh, ch you know, charge point operators uh, installing their own stations, Tesla does have to support CCS. This could change in the future, but currently the very newest superchargers, superchargers in the future that are being rolled out and built will probably maybe have both cables. Uh, in Europe, this actually is the case because they have one cable, Tesla vehicles don't have a North American charging standard. So basically, don't get too concerned about the plugs. There'll be adapters. There will be alternative cables from everyone provided. And both sides want to make this transition work. But we're going to, in the US especially, be living with both of these standards for a while one way or another. Another really noted compatibility is that the existing Tesla superchargers have very short cables. This poses very little problem for Teslas because as long as you park sort of accordingly, you have room. And cars like my Polestar uh, have their charge port in a similar location. In a Tesla, it'd be around here. In a Polestar, it's here. So if I parked perfectly, then yes, theoretically with an adapter, I could reach. I didn't do an amazing job parking, but maybe in my vehicle, I could. However, we've seen many vehicles like the Rivian R1 and the Ford F-150 Lightning. Um, in many cases, of course, these being bigger vehicles, but also just vehicles with charge ports in different places. Um, 
right? These superchargers were designed for Teslas. They weren't designed for those vehicles. So as a result, as a result, we've seen at the very few Magic Dock sites that have been installed in the U.S that those vehicles have to park in weird ways, sometimes take up multiple spots in order to actually be able to get close enough to charge. This is also an issue in Europe right now. Kyle has experienced this, if you watch out-of-spec reviews, uh, with non-Tesla vehicles at superchargers there uh, because Tesla's cables are just really darn short. And they're probably gonna have to be longer on the newer sites. V4 has strong indications this will be the case, but for the many V3 sites currently in operation, pending you know, Tesla doing some major re-architecting and suspecting this is just gonna have to be a growing pain and something to expect. So if you have a vehicle like my Polestar where the charge port is on the driver uh, rear side of the vehicle, then rejoice, it probably will work out okay. But so many vehicles, it's gonna be tough and we may have tensions as uh, basically a vehicle has to block one or two superchargers to be able to reach with the cable. So park carefully, be considerate, and we'll have to cover this much more as we get closer to these actually rolling out. When it comes time to actually plug in and pay a Tesla superchargers, for a Tesla owner, it's very easy. They have a Tesla account, they plug in, uh, the car does a handshake, and very quickly it starts charging, builds their account automatically, they walk away. It's gonna be potentially more complicated for non-Tesla vehicles because while there is a plug-in charge standard that works on non-Tesla cars and uh, networks like Electrify America have supported it, and it's possible Tesla superchargers could support it, it's gonna require setup and it's not a certainty. Some things to consider is if you're used to the method of using your credit card and tapping it for contactless payment, that's not a guarantee at all because in the US, no Tesla superchargers have that card reader. The very newest V4 hardware that we've seen roll out globally elsewhere, like in Europe, does have card readers, and that may very likely be to comply with regulations. In the US, there are no such regulations unless, the, of course, the charger has been funded through Nevi. And so maybe it's in Tesla's incentive to add those, but right now we don't know if they're gonna add those to every supercharger. We have no indication they're even gonna add it to any in the US. If they do, then that'll be great. You can just pay with a card, but very likely one of the ways you will be able to pay is using the Tesla app. Already, owners in Europe know this who charge their non-Tesla vehicles with uh, Tesla supercharging hardware. They use the Tesla app, they select the appropriate charger, and they start their charge. Now, if, again, it's all uncertainties. And if you want to follow this news, please do stay tuned out of spec guide because we'll cover it as we know it comes. But right now, the only way I can say you'll pay for certain is using the Tesla app. So it may not be as seamless as it is for Tesla owners. It's entirely possible that plug and charge will be worked out. However, I am skeptical personally because the standards that exist already for this for non-Tesla vehicles are in some ways incomplete and disputed and they haven't been implemented the same way. Bunch of nerdy discourse, but long story short, you may want to have the Tesla app on your phone if you're one of those people with a CCS vehicle looking forward to charging at these Tesla superchargers uh, net come next year in 2024. So that's basically the main points, the compatibility, no change in charging speed, if not potentially lower charging speed, not every supercharger working, and how you'll pay. Sound complicated? Well, that's because it is. And uh, I respect a lot, not just Tesla, but every automaker working with them for making this process happen. It's super exciting to see charging open up in the US, but hopefully this video has shown you that it may not be as simple or as bulletproof of a solution to our charging woes as you may think. Tesla supercharging is gonna be a big game changer for charging, don't get me wrong, but there's all these stipulations, these nuances, and things that we have to point out, um, and hopefully you understand now. As they come, as we get more news and more confirmation, there will be more videos than out of spec guide. For now, I'm very excited as a CCS owner, personally, someone with the Polestar 2, that I will be able to charge at Tesla superchargers next year. And I know a little bit now what that'll look like. More certainties have to come for sure. But please let us know if you have other questions uh, in regards to how you're gonna charge a non-Tesla to supercharger, or if you have suspicions, something you know, if there's something really important we've missed, we'll of course pin that comment. And stay tuned to Add a Spec Guide to learn more about all things EVs, charging, and the basics of that for you first time buyers. Thanks so much for watching, I've been Max.